Hey, good evening. This is Fredo, uh, bringing you the word of the day. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about um, the arm is the strength. Arm represents the strength, and um, this is how how arm is seen in the Bible um, as a strength for God. It's a strength. Um, First Samuel two thirty one. God is not pleased with uh, Eli and his family. Eli and his family are the um, the priests of God. Uh, his sons are are messing around. They're immoral, and um, God is mad. God is angry with them. Um, he, he he so this is actually for for Eli and his family it says behold for Samuel 231 behold the days come that I will cut off thine arm in the arm of thy father's house there should be not an old man in thine house they should be nine so this this cutting of the arm it's it's I like in other versions they say um, they say um, power they say they put in they they, they um, translated as strength so in this occasion uh, the arms are the strength of life um, there comes a point where in life people lose their strength and they die they, they they um they become old when they become old they, they die and uh, we saw it in the previous video um how God when he got mad that everybody just kept doing evil he said hey I'm gonna put a decree limit now limit the age it's not gonna go forever I'm gonna remove my spirit then it's not gonna be with them forever so 120 that's it and nowadays we see how that is not the case it's everybody's dreaming about just making it to 120 and before it was like an average um because abraham was 175 um then i think jacob was 130 130 so it, it became an average uh, but after that it's like it has lowered down and now we're good we have christ we have Jesus, the, the Spirit of Christ is in us. So hopefully as we realize that, uh, we get in power and we move beyond 120. Uh, so 1 Samuel 5, 1, 6, uh, God has been talking, hey, I'm going to cut off thine arms. Oh, so let me cut, cut off your power. This, is, this arm is not the arm of God it's not the arm of the Lord it's the arm of Eli and his family's members his father's armed uh, power so it's it's a symbolic power but even if symbolic it's not from God God will not cut his own arm um, unless he he sees that it's it's um, it's necessary but in the meantime he his arm is not short to save he's not as he can save he has the power he has the arm to do it so first samuel 5 1 6 um the philistines when the war the, the the war um the people of israel were fighting with them they were trying to gain their liberty from the philistines and they brought the ark and when they brought the ark they heard this shout of joy God is among us. God is among us, and um, and they brought the ark was brought by the sons of Eli, the the wicked the wicked sons of Eli, and um, and that was gonna be it for them. And um, they die in the battle. They take the ark of the covenant. They what represented God. They take it in and put it in their temple, and uh, um, in. Put it in their temple uh, next to their God, celebrating their God, and this is where something interesting happens. Um, after the Philistines had captured the Ark of God, 
they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod, brought it into the temple of Dagon, and placed it in next to his statue. When the people of Asia got up early in the next morning, there was Dagon falling in his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and returned him to his place. But when they got up early the next morning, there was Dagon falling in his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. This time, Dagon's head and both of his arms or his hands were broken um, off and lying on the threshold and Dagon's torso remained here. so it was like a, just I can only picture it um, probably he probably still had his legs but it says torso so probably his legs were gone too but uh, what gets my attention is that he that, that his arms get cut off uh, just like uh, God told Eli about his um, cut, his arms getting cut off. Now, um, that is why still today the priests of Dagon and everybody who enters the temple of Dagon in Ashton do not step in the Dagon's threshold. The Lord's hand. Now here's here's is he keeps keeps the theme of that hand. Now the Lord's hand was heavy, heavy on the people of Ashdod. He terrified the people of Ashdod and his territory in afflicting them with tumors. So now they're, they're, uh, they're feeling the power of God. So Dagon felt it and he lost his head. He lost his arms. Now the people are going to feel it. And they come to a conclusion, hey, we can no longer keep this ark. We gotta gotta figure out a way to get rid of it. Um, they were wanted to keep it as a trophy for their God, and it turns out that it was not a good idea. Uh, so now, in the first place, um, the people of Israel lost it because their priests went wicked, their priests went evil, and uh, Eli was old. He 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 his sons got out of hand. And uh, I think they were sleeping with the um, with the, the women in the in the in the tabernacle. They they, they they came to the tabernacle. They were sleeping with the women. They were not morally. Um, so God brought judgment upon them and brought judgment upon the house of Eli. And they even talk about replacing um, um, the Levite um, because these people were from Levite, the Levite, the Levite tribe. So not good, not good. Now we have a we have a high priest, and it's not from the tribe of Levi. It's a high priest that is royal, and a high priest from God. And it's, his name is Jesus. He's not gonna lose his hands. He's not gonna lose his power. Um, he 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 has become us. We are we die in him. In the at the cross, we are we were crucified with him. So there's no longer us, but him. So our identity now comes from him. So now we have his arms, his strength, um, and and sometimes uh, we use it, and sometimes we don't use it. But we should be using it. We have his arm because I think the time when we don't use it is because we we think it's our strength. But we should acknowledge that his breath, his arm is his, is his arm, his breath. And that's where our strength will come. That's where our, our power will come from. So it's us living in Christ. This is us, the, the, that was the plan that God designed uh, by sending Jesus to die for us. So that he could replace us, so we could become him. That was his idea. And now um, we see that Eli's strength got cut off. Um, he was probably a powerful man. He could hear God. Eli, Eli was ministering in the tabernacle, but now he he, he gets cut off. His power gets cut off, and um, the people that took the ark, the Philistines. They got cut off. They're, they're, God, they got cut off. And uh, and they got punished. 
they got punished and they come to a point where it says forget it let's put the art in a in a um with some cows and then have them take it back and uh, we'll we'll find a we'll find it the cows go back to the right place or maybe they go someplace else but god directed the cows to the right place and then the philistines said hey all this happened because you know um we took the ark of the covenant it's not it was not right so this is at a level where um about the about the gods philistine had their own god the israelites have their own god but the israelites were not keeping in accordance to the god's laws and they were mis they were being unfaithful on god's law so now they get punished they get punished and now uh, and now we can get punished because we have Jesus. He's our covenant. His blood, his flesh, is our covenant. He is our strength. He is our our, our arm. So, um, that's arm equals strength. Arm, the power of the arm. If you have no strength, think about maybe not using your own strength. Think about the strength of Jesus make him your strength make him your arm and um live that purpose that god desires that we become dead in christ our self dies in christ and it's now christ in us this is the message for today god bless you have a great day i'll see you tomorrow bye, -bye.